Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhat in which we will discuss how federal government policy affect investments and analysis. This topic is covered in Essential of Investments. As always, I would like to remind you to connect with me on LinkedIn. If you haven't done so, YouTube is where you would need to subscribe. I have 1,900 plus accounting, auditing, tax, finance, as well as Excel tutorials. If you like my lectures, please like them and share them. If they benefit you, it means they might benefit other people. On my website, farhatlectures.com, you will find additional resources to supplement this course as well as your accounting courses. So from a government perspective, they have two broad classes of macroeconomic tools that can affect the demand for goods and services and those that affect their supply. And those two tools are physical policy as well as monetary policy. And both of these policies are demand oriented. It means they are designed to increase the demand to, to, to grow the economy. They can stimulate the total demand for goods and services. Starting with the physical policy. What is the physical policy? Well, simply put, it's when the government used their taxing power, their spending and taxing power for the specific purpose of stabilizing the economy. Usually they want to create demand side. They want to grow the economy. So physical policies is the most direct way either to stimulate if you want to grow the economy or slow down the economy. Simply put, any decrease in government spending directly reduce the demands for goods and services. Or what they can do, they can increase the taxes. And when they increase the taxes, they take away all your spendable income. So the economy will contract. The thing with physical policy is it's subject to politics. The formulation of that of the physical policy and the implementation is usually painfully slow and involved. Sometimes it's not. Like back in March of 2020, when we had the coronavirus, Congress and the president, they worked together real quick to 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 uh, to get uh, to get some help to the people through physical through spending. Now we are on October 2020. Congress and the and, and, and the president are working on the HEROES Act, but it's back and forth and really painfully slow. OK, obviously, this is because you have Republican, you have Democrat, you have different political agendas. Physical policy require enormous amount of compromise between executives and legislative branches. And sometimes they are from different political uh, parties. And that what happened, politics gets, gets into the way. So tax and spending policy must be initiated and voted on by Congress. You start there, which require considerable political negotiation. And this is what's happening right now with the HEROES Act of 2020. And any legislation passed must be signed by the president. So again, if the president doesn't agree, he will throw it back. So it requires more negotiation, especially this year we have the election. So many things are going on all at the same time. The impact of any physical policy is relatively immediate. And this shows in the stock market. The stock market react positively for any physical policy reliefs like stimulus checks, uh, giving credit to businesses or loans the stock market reacts immediately okay although its formulation could take time formulation could take could take time the best way to look at how well the physical policy is uh, how well it's being run not how well like the effect of it is to look at the budget either deficit or surplus what's the surplus or deficit simply put the difference between revenues which is tax revenues and expenditure if you have more revenues than expenditure you have a surplus you're not spending as much and you are collecting um, you are collecting more money that you are spending if you have a deficit you are spending and simply put we are going through a deficit so this is the physical policy basically an overview it has an immediate effect but it's cumbersome to formulate monetary policy when you think of monetary think of the word money monetary policy is administered by the federal reserve system which is the fed refer to the manipulation of the money supply to affect macro economy and is the other main leg of the demand side policy that the government had under their control. So it's not it's not Congress and the president. Here we are talking about the Federal Reserve. Although although it's the government, it's supposed to be, in a sense, independent. So how do they affect the money through interest? Monetary works largely through the impact on interest rate. What happened is this: they increase the money, they increase the money supply, which in turn, if you have a lot of supply for money. Yeah, we have lower short interest rate. Lower short interest rate encourage people to buy homes, stocks, make investment, 
consume goods, which in turn stimulate the economy. So the, mo the monetary policy does not directly, like the physical policy, goes into the pocket of the, of the consumer. Like when they send you the stimulus check, if you receive a stimulus check, well, you receive that money in your bank account, you can spend it. Monetary policy, the influence interest rate, which in turn kind of trigger other reactions such as people will buy homes because interest rate is low. People will invest in stocks because they have no other alternative to invest. Companies will invest in capital project because now the cost of money is lower. However, some theory would say over the long, longer, longer periods, most economists believe in higher money supply only leads to higher prices and does not permanently affect the economy. That's, that's what they say. Thus, monetary policy face a difficult balancing act. Well, I'm going to tell you, for the past decade, I keep saying this, it's working perfectly. Okay, Expansionary monetary policy probably would lower interest rate and thereby stimulate investment. This is what it's doing and some consumption. Well, that's what it's doing in the short run. But it's not in the short run. But these, circum but these circumstances ultimately will lead only to higher prices. That's according to some economists. That's not happening these days. We are looking for inflation and we cannot find it. So it's working perfectly. So the stimulation slash inflation trade-off is implicit in all debate over proper monetary policy. It seems the more we print money, everybody better off. The stock market is better off. The consumer is better off, it seems. So monetary policy, in contrast to physical policy, is easily formulated because you have the Federal Reserve. They're not, as pol they're not into politics and implemented, but has less immediate impact. So again, the, the impact is not immediate because it, it has to go through the interest rate, interest rate tool. But they do have other tools. Let me, let, let, let's take a look at what the Fed's tool, what do they use? Well, they use something called open market, uh, open market operation in which the Fed buys and sells treasury bond from its own account. What does it mean buys and sells? When it buys securities, when it buys securities, it simply write a check, thereby increasing the, the money supply. But simply put, the Federal Reserve, it's not like us. They can pay for securities without drawing down funds at the bank. So they can write checks as much as they want. It's basically, simply put, it's unlimited. On the other hand, if, if they want to take the money out, the Fed, the Fed sells the security. The money paid for it leaves the money supply. So basically, if they want to suck the money out, that's what they would do. They will sell securities. So that's the open market operation occur daily, allowing the Fed to fine tune its monetary policy. And simply put, what's happening now is mostly this part right here, which is basically printing money, writing checks and printing and printing money. That's one tool. The other tool under the Federal, under the Federal Reserve is the discount rate, which is the interest rate it charges bank on short-term loans because bank, they need to borrow money sometime. How much they will charge them? If they charge them lower rate, banks will, will borrow more. And they also have another tool. It's called the reserve requirement. Banks will have to keep money at the Federal Reserve, which is the fraction of deposit that bank must hold as cash on hand or as deposits with the Fed. So here, what's going to happen? If they reduce the discount rate, if they reduce the discount rate, they signal a more exp expansionary, expanded monetary policy. Simply put, if the bank is borrowing money at a low rate, they can afford to lend it at a low rate too, which in turn stimulate stimulate the economy. Also, when the Federal Reserve require you to keep less money at, at, at the Federal Reserve Bank as a reserve, it's allowing you, simply put, they're giving you, if they if they ask you for less money, for, rather than 20% reserve they want from you, from your bank accounts, they want only 10, well, you can keep the other 10. So it allows bank to make more loans with each dollar of deposit and stimulate the economy by increasing the effective money supply. So that's what they do. It They either lend the money at a low rate or they tell the bank to keep less lower reserve amount at the Federal Reserve. So the discount rate is under the direct control of the Fed and it's changed relatively infrequently, generally speaking. Then we have something called the federal fund rate. The reason you want to you want to clarify that the federal fund rate is not set by the by the Federal Reserve, okay? is a guide, is a far better guide to the Federal Reserve policy. It signals the Federal Reserve policy what's going on. And sometimes it gives them really bad or good signals. The federal fund rate is the interest rate at which banks make short-term overnight loans to each other, to other banks. So the federal fund rate is market-oriented. It's not set by the government. But what happened is the Federal Reserve monitored this federal fund rate and they will intervene when one bank is charging too much for another bank. It means there is some shortage of money in the market. So the 
So, so the Federal Reserve will intervene and know what to do, print more money. These loans occur because some banks need to borrow fund to meet reserve requirement, while others, they have access funds. So if you have access fund, you lend to the banks that need the fund. So unlike, unlike the discount rate, as I told you, the Fed fund rate is a market rate, although it's a market rate, I'm going to put market rate in quote, the Federal Reserve can influence it. Market rate means it's determined by supply and demand rather than be, rather by being set. Nevertheless, the Federal Reserve Board target the Fed fund rate, expanding or contracting the money supply through the open market operation. So they can easily influence this rate. Simply put, it's another tool for the uh, for the Fed. So the so they look at the Fed fund rate as a signal what's really going on in the market and they would react appropriately. They would react appropriately. Now if you talk to some people these days you know, they would say, you know, the, the Federal Reserve isn't intervening too much, printing a lot of money, which is it's inflationary down the road, but remain to be seen. Um, if you, uh, you know, if, if you'd like additional resources about this course, please visit my website, farhatlectures.com. And if you're studying for your CPA or other accounting courses, please visit my website. Study hard, good luck, and most importantly, stay safe.